What is it though, Christopher, in that um, two cultural parents, Great Britain uh, and a bit the French, but Great Britain and, yeah. and America. And I don't quite, I acknowledge and I've watched what happened to us, as it were, as something emerged. And we said to one parent, we love you, but we don't want to be you. And then the other parent, the United States, took dominance, yes. as you say. And then we sort of said, well, we like you, but we don't want to be you. Mm. What was that? How does that happen in a culture? It happens because you hold up a mirror to it. You hold up a mirror and say, look, you don't, uh, you're, you look like this. It's those people in Vancouver who couldn't <coughs> tell me who'd written about Vancouver. I wanted to see the mirror of this place. I wanted what I discovered later. I wanted Ethel Wilson's short stories about Vancouver at that, that time. But uh, I didn't know that, people didn't know that she'd written them practically. It was, I didn't run into the people who knew. The, the writing that had been done in the, oh well, I mean, you've just got to, in the late 19th century, early 20th century, hadn't really made a dent in this country. We realize now that there have been people, look at these, look at the headlines, Tom Thompson sketch, it's this size, mm -hmm. you know, going for half a million. Well, in 1961, I could have bought one for 500 pounds, uh, dollars, I suppose. Um, why am I thinking in pounds? Oh, because we were talking. Uh, 500 dollars. <coughs> so that mirror, just of, of Tom Thompson sketching of ourselves, sketches of ourselves, were not thought of very highly. But what is it about the mirror that, in fact, engendered this reaction? In me or in, in, in the you, world? but in this country as well. That's what I'm trying to understand through your eyes. I think. Well, it's a, you. Things are given value. Things are given value in our society. And one of the things that's given value amongst people like ourselves, though that is changing, are these cultural icons. These these sense of being painted, being written about, music being written. They have to be there uh, to be able to say you have a culture. That's what we think. Mm -hmm. More than that, they have to be recognized. I mean, Tom Thompson and the group of seven were painting, and so were a lot of other people, you know, David Mill and all the rest of them. Uh, for ages, nobody was really recognizing what was going on. But in fact, the mirrors were being held up by people all over the place, all the time. But you only have to recognize the mirror. It's like developing an audience. You can't give an audience who wants to see Oklahoma, they don't necessarily want to look at Hamlet, so you can't advertise Hamlet as a laugh riot with songs and expect an audience to sit there and being able to make the connections with the piece. Well, we weren't able, I, I speak as a Canadian now, we weren't able to make the connection between even the mirrors that were held up. They didn't seem interesting to yeah. us. I don't know quite why, but round about, I think it was towards Sometime in the 60s, they began to be interesting. They began to get more and more people looking at what the place was, what, it, what it's really about. You still find it in people who run down Toronto. Toronto is one of the great magical cities of North America. I mean, I was lucky, I recognized this. And in about 1962, I was on a streetcar on St. Clair. I think this is what happened because it's a fuzzy memory on it now uh, that it was on St. Clair. But the streetcar was going across a bridge. And I looked down, and all I could see was treetops. And at the moment, I realized that the, c the city is a very private, secretive city. And when I realized that, just from looking out of the streetcar, I began to understand Toronto. And everybody had gone, well, oh, Toronto's so boring, this, 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 you know, I've landed in this place where everybody told me it was boring. It's just so stupid, you know? Nobody, nowhere is utterly boring for people, there's things happening. And then I realized the secrecy of Toronto, uh, that you can ski across Toronto, I'm told, in the ravines, actually, right. if you know how to do it. And that's magical. And the fact that it's split up into villages. So this is me looking at Toronto. But I found myself out on a limb uh, by saying these things, that this is a wonderful city, this is alive in the most extraordinary way. People wouldn't believe me, oh no, don't you want to go to New York? So of course, I went, oh, maybe I'm wrong, you know, that's how I ended up thinking that appearing in the knack, you know, was the greatest thing to happen. But to go back again, the mirrors, you say, the mm. mirrors were hung up mm. and the connections weren't made by mm. people either individually or in a, mm. in, in a larger sense. 
What, what them to makes make the connection start? Is it critical mass? Is it certain a number of people who stayed? Is it the it's fact that it came out of the war? Is it that, because the same thing happens in the theater, right? We hold yes. up the mirrors and we want the connections yes. to begin to happen. I think it's a critical mass, I, I, I think. But you have to have the connections. You have to be able to, you have to, the mirror has to show something that's recognizable. Uh, but you may not be able to completely say, oh, it's this. You go, oh, that's, I sort of know what that is. But you have to know more than sort of knowing what it is. It has to be very specific. And I think there is a critical mass of people talking, people saying things about our environment, about country, about, about the idea of North. <coughs> I remember as us... I can't remember when, when Diefenbaker got in, uh, what his dates are, whether I was here or in the <coughs> States or whatever. 58, I think. 58? 56, 58, I think Diefenbaker got in. No, I've been in, in the States, <coughs> but I remember reading about him, and I, I remember Diefenbaker talking about the North. He actually used to talk about that Canada was defined by the North. That doesn't, it's, it's an odd thing when you think of Diefenbaker as that silly old man, you know, kind of growled, but there were big ideas there that he couldn't carry out. And, and Glenn Gould doing the idea of North. That's you know? absolutely right. And that excited me. I remember reading about it. I must have been in the States. The idea of North. What does that mean into the cold? It's not as sexy as the desert and cowboys and things. And there's people all ca covered up. And, going somewhere, but that was constantly interesting. It's when we connect with these things, we connect with basic images of the land. The, the prairie isn't boring. It, it just isn't. It's the most extraordinary thing that the, the earth widens, if you like. And to understand that is people hadn't completely, it hadn't become an imaginative. Um, maybe that's it because maybe this country is about connections and yes. the connections weren't made and then they slowly began to be made and now they're made in a sort of accelerating you yes. think of Meher Arar, you think of his story, the Lebanese yes. story, the Air India story, how yes. this country's and the connections, the United States as it were, as we love them, as our, was always sexy and was always energized so you had Canada without connections, but a lot of mirrors being held up, but you had an always a very sexy parent down yeah, there. And yeah. of course we want to be like our sexy parents. Absolutely. But then that critical mass, something happened, yes. and these connections started to spin together in a way that maybe none of us could ever have foreseen, but they've woven something quite different and oh, quite it's, interesting. It's happened. It's, happened. It, it's like when, um, you know, President, President Bush's father used to talk about the kinder, gentler America that he wanted. Well, it always made me quite angry because I had to say, well, it's already been invented. It was invented in 1867. That's us. We are the kindler, kinder, gentler version of a North American civilization. That's us. This is a, a federation that was put together out of respect for each other. An incredible difference, and we can't even imagine it now. To, to think that People, you know, in Peggy's Cove were connected with people way across the country. Well, not in 1867, it took the next, you know, mm -hmm. 73 when BC came in or whenever it was, um, to connect all this. It was a, an incredible imaginative jump for people to make this connection of these separate, separate uh, settlements almost. Yes, Toronto was thriving. Montreal and Quebec City had always been sophisticated centers, or, but not terribly sophisticated. They weren't New York, and they weren't Paris, and they weren't London. They were kind of provincial centers. Interesting, but they hadn't... When you, come, when you change from being a provincial center to being something in your own right is the moment of birth, in a sense. That only happened to Toronto in the 70s, I think. 